whether you could say science is in my DNA, I'm not quite sure. I think curiosity is in my DNA. My name is Graham Farquhar. I'm a professor of environmental biology at the Research School of Biology at the Australian National University in Canberra. This year in January, I was named a Senior Australian of the Year. In 2015, I received the Prime Minister's Prize for Science, and earlier I shared the Nobel Prize given to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. In terms of scientific recognition, I think the Kyoto Prize last year is pretty hard to beat. My work has been about how leaves of plants take up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and turn it into sugars and grow. The carbon dioxide enters the leaves through small pores called stomata. But because the air inside the pore is moist, the moisture in the air diffuses out through these same holes. The central part of my work is this trade-off between maximising carbon dioxide uptake for growth and photosynthesis and minimising water loss by transpiration or evaporation. You can only do one at a time, you can't do both at the same time. This sort of research should climate-proof us to some extent. The big thing is climate variability, and if you can breed plants that can enable farmers to deal with climate variability, then I think that's the main challenge that will see us through climate change itself. One interesting piece of work, which is still reasonably fresh and still not understood, involves the changes in wind speed over land. The strange thing is that despite global warming, pan evaporation rate has been tending to go down around the world. Some of that's because of less sunlight reaching the pan, which we call global dimming. And this was the case in eastern United States and Europe, where pollution had built up, and that was reducing the amount of light reaching the pans, and so that was easy to understand. But then we looked at Australia, and we saw that Australia was actually decreasing. It was hard to imagine that pollution was increasing in Australia. So we started analysing the meteorological conditions at each reliable site that we could find. When we looked at all these factors, we found that what was driving most of the change in Australia and New Zealand, at least, was a reduction in wind speed. So, put it in context, the mean wind speed over Australia is two metres a second. So that's a 15% reduction in wind speed in, in 30 years. That's the biggest signal of any climate change that I know of. That was my fourth form class. I think it was this one. This is my biology classroom. This science area is new for me. I always find it hard to imagine that we've had enough time to evolve all the things we've got. Some students are good at experiments. Some students are good at, at theory. I think what happened in my case is that I developed in mathematics more slowly. At the end of 10th grade, my maths teacher here advised me to take general mathematics because we thought it was pretty clear that I didn't have much future in mathematics. And for my second year matric, I ended up with a first in calculus applied mathematics and a second in pure mathematics. And I ended up you know, doing applied maths for my degree and applying it for my professional life. My advice to parents is not to come to premature conclusions about whether their child is weak in mathematics or not, but to persist because it may just be that they're not ready for the mathematics that they're being given in, in class and that if they persist, they will enjoy it and find it useful and apply it for the rest of their life. The motto at Wesley is separe aude, which I think means dare to be wise. The dare brings up the notion of creativity and laying it out there, risking failure. And dare to be wise has all the sides that we love about wisdom. I think to make a breakthrough in science, you have to be creative. But what carries research in the long run is really intellectual curiosity, not necessarily accepting the, the answers that one is given when one asks questions, whether they're in science or outside science. I think curiosity is, is a mark of intelligence, uh, a mark of a, of a brain that's not yet full. I'm lucky that I've made discoveries that I find quite beautiful. The excitement that I would like to introduce other younger people in, into is the excitement that comes from seeing further than people have seen before. In the long run, it's like when you're thinking of dance or music or art, 
You don't know what the artist had to go through to finally produce that painting, but it's the painting at the end of the day that matters. One thing I'd like to single out from my time at Wesley that did affect me is that I think Wesley embodied a lot of aspects of civilization. In a practical sense, Wesley introduced me to, to success.